Now, now we yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. So, uh, first of all, thank you to, to Mayara and uh, you can to be here with, with us. Uh, Mayara is an architect, historic preservationist, educator, and researcher. He's an assistant professor of architecture and director of historic preservation and design program at Texas Tech University. Mayar studied, researched, practiced, and fought both in Iran and in the United States. He received his PhD in architecture from Penn State, his master's degree in historic preservation planning from Cornell University, and his professional master of architecture from Azad University in Tehran. As an architect and historic preservationist, Mayar concentrates on modern folk throat is a work of documenting local adaptation of modern architecture and analyzing them by using computational design methodologies. Yukan is an architect, associate professor at the College of Architecture and Urban Planning at Tongji University in Shanghai, China. Khan is now developing his activities at the Institution of Architecture and Urban Space. His experiences comes from practice in different contexts, such as German, Germany and Italy and China. He received his PhD in Building Engineering and Architecture from the University of Pavia, Italy, and he is author of numerous scientific publications, in particular related on architectural cultural studies and the effects of cultural transfer in Shanghai's contemporary architecture. He documents the transformation in modernist architectural theories and the modernity of architectural practice in, in China. So thank you very much again, Yukan and uh, Mayar, to join us uh, today. Uh, as I told you, we have uh, seven groups. Uh, each group is composed by two, two members, and uh, each group has 10 minutes to present their, uh, their project. Then uh, I will, uh, we will give you some, some minutes to, to fill the, the Excel, to, to give the, the evaluation, and then uh, we can go on with, uh, with the other groups. Uh, in these five minutes, uh, uh, Mayar and, and Khan, if you agree, you can make some uh, questions to the students to better understand the project and to give a more coherent and correct evaluation of the projects. And then at the end, uh, we, we have 15, 20 minutes, more or less, at the end of the presentation to give uh, general comments and consideration about the project. See? Perfect. So uh, yeah. now we can start. First of all, I would like just to introduce you a little bit the topics. Uh, I already sent you an, an email with, with the general, uh, general topic. The topic is uh, on the regeneration of a urban area and buildings in uh, downtown El Paso. Uh, El Paso is uh, the city on the, on the border between Mexico and the US. And uh, in the downtown is uh, very rich of uh, architectural heritage and also some uh, important and interesting social, social issues. So, each group, according with uh, their own sensibilities, uh, develop a project of regeneration uh, of building or of urban spaces, uh, taking into account the heritage and the social situation. Okay, so if you agree, we can start with the, with the first uh, group. The first group is Tanya and Fer. When you are ready, you can start sharing the screen. Ah, one thing is uh, each group uh, will present three panels. In the case of uh, Tanya and Fer, they decided to join the three panels just in one big panel. So you will see just one big, one big panel. Um, when you're ready, you can start in 10 minutes. Can you give me the access to share my screen, please? Can you know? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Now we start? Sure. Okay. Hello, my name is Fernanda and she is Tanya and we're going to present a creative pub that is located in Duranguito, El Paso, Texas and is part of the downtown. Well, Duranguito is the first historic neighborhood in El Paso and it's on the verge of being destroyed, but the demolition plans haven't gone farther because of the perseverance of the locals to keep it alive and to preserve the historic heritage. And we want to make a highlight of this importance of the pres preservation of heritage because it becomes part of what we are and it shows 
our values and tell us the story of the community. However, many local shops and galleries have been closed down and leaving residents with no other option but to leave. Then we detected those main social problems and we put it as abandonment and conflict of interest. But we also detected there are some good things in the community, like the United Community and the Historic Heritage. Some examples of them are the firehouse, Victoriana homes, and the service Chinese community. First of all, we analyzed Duranguito and we realized it has a lot of informal and formal creative places. That's why we focus on this topic of creativity. We searched for a worldwide reference and we found out that Shanghai 1933, which was a former slaughterhouse, that it's now a place of local culture, and M50, which is also in Shanghai, which was a textile district and now it's an art district. As we were doing this research, we read the book of Richard Florida, that is the rise of the creative class, in which he states that the creative class are a key driving force of the economic development. So we lead to the conclusion that the more creativity, the more productivity, and the more happiness. This is our idea of how Duranguito Revert starts. This is the creative path. And our concept, creative belonging, is expressing community in unique ways that arouse cultural expression in public spaces, imparting the sense of belonging, productivity, and economy. Well, as Daniel already said, we first started analyzing the creative centers in downtown El Paso, and you can see them marked here. Then we focus on the formal and informal creative centers in Duranguito, El Paso, such as the theater, galleries, and street art. And we decided to work with this area, but impacting all Duranguito because we took into account those elements, those creative centers to integrate our project and be part of Duranguito. Our project has the purpose of connecting people with other places of, of Duranguito, with each other and themselves, but also to promote Duranguito's heritage, but making of it an attractive place so people will go there and will appreciate the historic buildings that exist. The creative path has a potential to revitalize neglected areas and provide opportunities for local people to re-engage with their heritage. This way we are generating a sense of pride and belonging in the local area through the increased community participation. We design a system created to invite people to tap into their own creativity. We intervene four potential spots to revitalize Duranguito. We chose them for this strategic location and current function, creating a connection between the spots and the main streets. First, a parking lot, one of many of the Duranguito have, and it's in front of Abraham Chavez, which is a formal creative center, and the Greyhound Station. The second one, it's the Firefighters Park because of its heritage and memorial for the community and we wanted to make it more accurate. The third one, it's a vacant lot between the streets to use it as a connection and with a purpose. And the last one is the Tiradero Market and we chose it because we wanted to support local business and to make Duranguito more productive. Spots are designed thinking of everyone, so in each space we have places for kids, students, adults, works, etc. We created a colorful environment where people can live experiences designed to unlock their creativity inside us all. In our research, we found out that nature, open spaces, colors, and music can boost creativity so we use those elements in our project to reach our goal of boost creativity. We're going to start here with the music pavilion that was a parking lot. We put a pavilion, floor pianos, marimbas, this, and also we put some trees to have the elements of creativity. And there are some benches so you can go there and chill. 
Then we have the firefighters park. We kept the statue to keep the essence of the park, just to add the creativity. We put a color reflective pavilion, a playground, and we also put a floor chalkboard and wall art so the residents can, or people that visit the creative path can go there and paint whatever they want. Next, we transformed the vacant lot into an installation park. It has a stairway where you can sit and chill, a green area, and a ceiling designated for installation, boosting creativity and generating a sense of community. These installations could, could change uh, between the months because the people will, will make different installations in different times. Then, last one, the Tiradero Market. It's a market for the community, by the community. We designed an outdoor planade for multiple uses and we make a market. First of all, the first part, it's more like a, a local shop area in which the producers could sell their products in there. And then a conventional part in which it's a like a conventional market, but we designed the racks so they can flow with the design of the creative path. Also in the esplanade, we put pivotating windows to connect the outer and the inner, and we put a stage, which is also inner and outer, where you can have live performances. Well, this is how will be the life of the creative path, and we plan to close the streets on weekends so the people can make activities and integrate more, and here is the path. And here is the facade you can you will see during the path. Well, in conclusion, creativity powers economic and cultural aspects, enabling people of Duranguito to reflect a unified community and spread spread a strong feeling of belonging. The uniqueness of creative path will attract more people to visit Duranguito, providing a solution. To, for citizens to reopen their local shops and support each other. In this way, merging the existing heritage and integrating that creativity and within, we will connect the uh, people of today with the Duranguito of tomorrow. Also, we want to show you a web page that we made because we want to promote the creative path and promote Duranguito and its value. Here is an example of a flyer that will announce their activities. But we um, can, we are. I, I, I cannot see the, oh, the website if you're showing it. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. Now? Yes. Oh, sorry. Well, here the idea of the web page is to announce the monthly activities we will have like concerts like music activities art galleries and everything and here is a small video of the path and the facades and the things that you will see And here you can subscribe for news and for to know the activities we will have in the creative path. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kanye Fer, thank you. Mayara and Kani, if you have any questions about the project, something that is not clear and you would like to, to better understand before to give some evaluations, please. Feel free to make questions. Thank you. Uh, this is what we made a review one by one or one group by one group, right? Yes. It's a group by group. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. if you have any questions to give an evaluation, yes. Uh, we, we finish with the first group so we can make the evaluation. 
And then at the end, uh, we make the comments and so on. But if now we have any questions to better evaluate this group, we can ask now. I, I have a couple of questions. First of all, I didn't quite get, so the path is only is like a pedestrian mall, right? So you basically design a pedestrian mall and then there are um, uh, buildings around that mall that are uh, used as the way it's using right now and there are four other buildings that you change uh, the function slightly, right? Or redesign or, or are like new designs. The rest, the rest of the buildings are the same as they are currently. Yes, we only intervene in these four spots and these are parks and this is the only one that is outdoor and indoor space. So how, so how did you pick those four um, buildings? Did you do like a context analysis to, to find out that these are uh, problematic areas or these have like potential to, to do something with the uh, new approach or basically you chose them because of the availability for example saying that that's an empty lot or that's like a parking or how, how what was your criteria to like to choose those uh, buildings yes first of all for example the parking lot we chose it because it's in front of the another creative center and because of the the Greyhound station they come visitors well they have buses coming every hour so it's a uh, like if you get out of the bus it's the first thing you see so it's like an introduction to Durangita and then the firefighters is because we in that avenue the main west avenue street there's a lot of street art and also galleries and then the fire station and the firefighters park so the firefighters is like an, a memorial for the fire station and also it has all the elements to boost creativity so it will connect with the gallery and the street art that it's already in there and then the the vacant lot it's because it's in the two streets that we chose so it it could be like a, a conflicted area because it ha it didn't have a use and now it's a place where you can make art, you can hang out, chill, and like be with the community. And the Tiadero Market, we conserve the elements that were already there, the, like the structure, but we make it more like accurate with what, what we want to represent, like the creativity of the people in Duranguito that we know because we make an analysis that they have and to boost it with all these architectural interventions. Thank you. Thank you, I have no question, okay. Perfect, thank you very much. And can uh are you ready if we go with the second group or do you need a little bit of time to to fill the the excel we can continue okay okay mayar let me know if when you're ready um i i have a problem i cannot like fill in If you give me a couple of minutes so I can like solve this problem, I would appreciate. Okay, sure. Okay, I think I'm good. In in a minute, you can like start. Okay, perfect. Aviary Arlanda, you are ready, right? Okay, so when my yard is ready, we, we can start.
you can start. Thank you. I'm sorry for the wait. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, I'm Javier and my teammates at Landa. And our project is also based. Can we start now, right? Yes, please, you can start. Okay. So our project is also located in the Duranguitos area. And this is specific, this specific area has a lot of has a lot of history to be told. Almost uh, only the people around the area knows about. So we found out that there is a city of El Paso that was born almost there. And and also was one of the places where the Camino Real took place. And speaking of the days of the gold rush, where Duranguito is right in the middle of the two transcontinental connections. We're talking about the roots. At one point, this is where the first people of El Paso got together to become a community. Big first families started up, Indians, Mexicans, and Chinese people helped with the railroad, live in precious historic buildings in the Duranguitos area. So up to now in 2016, the city of El Paso chose a four block section of Duranguitos area to build a $180 million downtown indoor, indoor arena. In order, in order to, do, to do so, they want to demolish all Duranguito area apart. Since then, the neighborhood, the neighborhood has been center of of a battle between community activists and city developers. So our proposal is to establish a project on the heart of the area, El Tiradero Market. Just like our friends, uh, it was one of the, one of the buildings they, they picked. So currently it's an abandoned building. We are sure we can bring back life to the area, inform people about their heritage, create a landmark type of building, attract tourism, connect and unify all cultures around, bringing diversity back together with the current identity of preserving the area. Of course, preserving the Tiradero with an architectural program of activities, plus a cultural pavilion, performance area, and an and, and amphitheater. Theater. Sorry. So by preserving El Tiradero Market, um, leave us with an established structure and based to the shape that it already has. And we propose this program that fits to the, to the criteria we defined earlier, this one. Uh, so at first we have at the entrance a farmer market over here over here and where they can interact with the growth of the local economy economy sorry opening possibilities to trade and sell whatever they want and then from this area you have uh, two options to wait uh, you can go to the outdoor green area over here or go to the indoors activities at set place that includes a chess, ping pong and pool table area and a whole and a whole spaces to art and craft workshops here and to boost the development of Mexicans art and pieces of art in in general. Um, followed by that there will be a library over here. Uh, where you can find uh, many options to read and research and of course source material from the Duranguito Jerry Touch history and uh, then in front of the library and open recreation area here and the main green open area and by the back end of the Tiradero here it, it will take place a gastronomic restaurant where people can truly taste real Mexican cuisine and right next to it here, we find craft beer and wine 
and it doesn't end there because also we find an amphitheater here and it's for all the public and also we have another performance area here uh, where all type of activity activities can take place and is more like private and lastly we can find this pavilion here where we can explore inside and around and it's it has that well and it has this type of real stru structure with panels along and the people can, can interact like a maze and observe and observe piece, pieces of art attached to the panels of panels as gallery sorry so what essentially excites us about the program are the open spaces areas the main green areas the amphitheater the performance area the pavilion and the market because it really empowers everyone to connect to create their own world letting them interact free and that's exactly what architecture is supposed to be about finding ways to empower people to influence their physical environment so that they can actually perform the way they want. Therefore, our concept, our concept stipulates a balance that contains Duranguito's roots and history. With an attractive configuration, collective and initiative spaces to create a new bond through a journey based on fragments, moments that ultimately generates a unique experience for each user available all day long, where this concept truly fits every aspect of our project. There are pl plenty nationalities living here since we are located near the border, so the importance of the project is to involve the local community and really make sense of the, the ownership. That's why we got this idea to create that type of market, uh, similar to ones similar to the ones you can find in Mexico, uh, but also um, attract all kinds of diversity, diverse people that want to come and learn, taste, enjoy, and see different things uh, to what they're used to. Abby. So another important place where, where they can express a sense of ownership is the pavilion um the amphitheater and the performance area because really what it what we are giving them is a place where they can use it to display their art like paintings murals perform traditional folk dances play traditional music have the matachines perform tributes to artists and way much more to express and well we got some elements in our project and can exist harmony in the interaction with people we open a path of the front of the building that opens up to the street where it's covered with a wooden lattice instead of a wall and also we have another entrance uh, from the back of the library over here and in the front that that connects the main green area to the to the library and we have the pavilion the amphitheater and performance area that interconnects every side of the project with the main green area again So the, so the users can truly use the, the project all day long. The diversification of the project opens up, opens up it, for example, the main green area, area can turn into a night, can turn at night, uh, at night to a outdoor cinema and the amphitheater um, as a late night music performance. So to wrap it all up, we are, where, where it used to be an abandoned area like this, uh, we create a living all day use type of building 
with cultural their diversity, sense of ownership, and attractive to the community with a dynamic project, changing the current perception to the best. El Tiradero Market, for the people, to the people's project. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, can, can I have some uh, question? Sure, can. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, your, your project is very deep, uh, concentrated on the uh, project of architecture design. My question should be, uh, in which level of the market and the theater you, you want to build? Uh, uh, this means this is a, a community level or just in a street or uh, how, how big an area it will be influenced? The area would be intervenes uh, from the from the actual pathway that's already there because it's just like that. It's just like a plate full of cement, and we just want to to use it in in our advantage. And one of the one of the um, one of the the ground floor shows how. It's everything. It's in the same level, except for for uh, for the library and the offices that we have. But that way, that will be it. Okay, uh, uh, because just I, I make an understanding. Because like in Shanghai, uh, we have a kind of uh, design to control people reach everything in fifteen minutes. Uh, it means if uh, in a community level. Uh, this is the standard of Shanghai. I gave you an example that uh, we control people by work in 15 minutes can reach all the services, activities they want. So we set up, this is like a, a community level services, like a, a bars, like a post office, uh, some, some convenience stores, and uh, uh, this is uh, belongs to uh, the scatter, the distribution of these uh, services should be within people's uh, working ability can be reached. So uh, the, uh, you have uh, many uh, multifunction like uh, gyms, uh, chess. Uh, this is uh, like uh, all the activity can be a service for elder people, young people, and and even the kids. So so could be like a community skill, right? Uh, as I, um, I may understand. You are mute, uh, right. Javier. Javier, you are mute. Yeah, that's correct. The longest side, the longest side of the of the project, it's only a hundred meters, hundred hundred and six meters, and we are trying to trying to to connect all the people together with this with this market with this chess area with this library with the cultural pavilion and and this guest is where where outsiders can also can come to this area and just enjoy and and see how how different uh all, all packed or not packed but like all together can be can be also convenient okay thank you thank you very much I, I have a quick, quick question, but uh, that might be considered as a comment as well. So you guys did a, a great study of the history, of course, um, and based on what you found, um, you designed this. So and and the way that you presented showed me that you had a historical analysis, contextual analysis, um, and the functions or the, um, the design that you did in terms of what, what to put where, you, you, you considered all those uh, contextual analysis. But I don't necessarily see that your design um, forms, um, format, and um, all those things are based on the um, contextual analysis. Is, is that intentional? So you wanted to use the contextual analysis in order to develop the project but not design the form or 
uh, you basically had in mind the contextual analysis while designing the form. We we saw a potential in like well we 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 thought like destroying everything just like the city wants to, but we instead uh, focus this main area because there's a there's historical very vocal historical um, buildings houses as well that were not fit to this to the to the type of of scale we wanted to to create so with this uh, type of what to call them in English, this type of area this type of, of, of open space which is a, a tiradero like a, like an actual uh, storage area we wanted to preserve it just like that and, and have the same entrances and have the same name uh, in order for the people to recognize and see how a change in, in the activity can can rebirth this this little this little area you know very good by the way you mentioned that you put a restaurant here to serve authentic mexican food but then when you were talking about drinks you only mentioned beer and wine what happened to tequila <laughs> that's right that's right well i, I guess i guess when i was <laughs> when i was thinking i was just thinking on beer i i just like a beer, I guess. <laughs> but you're right. Very good project. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mayara and Khan, thank you very much. If you need any more time to, to fill the, the Excel, please take your time. Or if it's fine, we can go with the, with the third group. Fine, Khan? Super. Okay. So the third group is uh, René and Carlos. Please, yeah, René, Carlos, when you're ready, you can start sharing the screen and start the 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, first of all, good evening. We are Carlos Rodriguez and René Castañeda, and we are going to start to explain the Union San Jacinto project. Uh, we, are, we want to start for the historical context of San Jacinto Plaza, which is the heart of downtown. From a macro perspective, is uh, San Jacinto Plaza was literally the, the place where, the, where Mexican and US President Taft and Porfirio Diaz met for the first time to, uh, to talk about investments, US investments in Mexico. From a micro perspective of San Jacinto Plaza is that uh, they actually, they have um, lead lizards back in the 50s and 60s. So uh, most of the El Paso people is, um, just recognize the icon of a lizard's fountain that they actually have. So, uh, so by surveys, the only uh, strong uh, relation that people recognize are the lizard's fountain. So uh, that's the only part we want to preserve. Well, then we make an extensual site analysis uh, uh, taking three, three kind of, of, buildings, of buildings or three kind of typologies. And by conclusion, we have that uh, El Paso downtown has a lot of monotony right now. So uh, El Paso, Texas downtown architectural essence remains mostly the same as the 40s and 50s, which of course is a good idea to conserve the heritage of the city, but just at a certain point. It has a lack of contemporary character balance, which is a distinctive area of opportunity to add value, contrast, and attractiveness uh, to this area of the city. And well, we, mm, the project want to break uh, this monotony. And uh, 
the most iconic and historical first world cities around the world have this kind of contrast and coexisting between historical heritage buildings and contemporary innovating projects are a significant part of what attracts the public and what remains in the user's perception as a singular and enjoyable spatial experience of the city. Architecture is really about well-being. I think that people want to feel good in space. On the one hand, it's about shelter, but it's also about pleasure. And another quote of Saha Hadid is there are 360 degrees, so why to choose and stick to one? And well, the reference cases where we can see this kind of uh, coexistence is uh, the Antwerp House of Saha Hadid, the Lubrum Museum of EMP, the World Maritime University of Uton Junior, and the Royal Ontario Museum of Liverskin. Well, the, the main problems we have of El Paso downtown, from a macro perspective, are that El Paso, Texas downtown already have first world class public spaces. The problem is that they are not efficient. Why? The lack of lift, because El Paso population are not attracted to downtown unless they work there or is something really necessary. From a micro perspective, San Jacinto Plaza is recognized already like an icon of El Paso City, especially like the heart of his downtown. The problem is that this concept remains just in theory and not in practice. For the minimal everyday interaction people have with this space and the lack of functional purpose of it. So how can architecture solve this? Recreating San Jacinto Plaza concept with an innovating proposal. From a micro perspective, a first class city main recreational park with a high pedestrian flow avenue surround with efficient and innovative building focus to the food sector. Macro perspective, the creation of an attractive and lightful downtown recreational heart, which will increase the flow and interaction of users and with that create real community among the Paso population, following the activities which promotes the most social interaction that are actually eating and recreation. Well, this is the, the area we're taking. So basically we're taking the next, the next uh, north block. So we're extending the, the, the actual block of San Jacinto Plaza. And we are also taking the, the main uh, street. And also as, the, more, as ex, the direct section of Oregon and Mesa and E Main streets. Well, uh, the special concept, the special concept base has three sources of inspiration. Human union is the main goal. That's why the concept make literally reference to our most basic bonding act representing two people hugging or holding hands. In second instance, it makes reference to El Paso essence, which is the blending of Mexican and American cultures. And for the, for the third instance, it makes reference especially to an historical, as, as I told you before, uh, moment and place when the Mexican-American president, William Taft and Porfirio Diaz met in San Jacinto Plaza for the first time in 1909. So that's how we get uh, the shape of, of the buildings. And well, I, I just want to, to take a quote. That is the, as is an Anthony Gaudi uh, quote, the, who is the, one of the first exponent, Spanish exponents of modernism and is those, those who look for the loss of nature as a part of their new works, collaborate with the creator. So we're, mm, okay. Can you hear me? Hello, yes? Okay. Yes, yes. I guess I, I was having a problem with my microphone, but okay. Um, well, I'm just gonna um, tell you about the concept. So basically, we we have this total intervention area that has three three uh thirty hundred thirty hundred thirty six I mean thirty thousand thirty six me uh, square meters. Um, we have the building unity area that has two two hundred uh two thousand four four hundred twenty meters. So basically, this is the our intervention so we tried to make this like look for because as, as rene said it was the main is this is the heart of the of san jacinto san jacinto is the heart of el paso so we tried to make it like this like put a lot of vegetation a lot of trees to make um to make it like the lungs of the of, the, of san jacinto so uh, can you can you go in down please oh well 
um, yeah, as you can see here, we have the context floor plan that uh, is already been said that it uh, crosses the main street. We have this like uh, hexagon hexagon building that has um, the, 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 the Lagartos Fountain. And we also try to put the other, we, we, we try to keep this fountain and try to like mirror another one that the, the one that is hugging. Um, you, and then the top part, you can see all uh, uh, open theater that it's almost uh, inside, that it's free for any people, any type of concert, any type of uh, um, whatever they want to do in, 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 the, in San Jacinto. And there is uh, in, in the middle that the train that we try to make it open. So, for example, kids that go, they can go around and just... Uh, uh, Sorry, girls. Uh, uh, for, for example, like the train, that there's already a, a, a hole where the train passes under the city. So we want to preserve this hole instead of just putting uh, something under to make a... We want to promote a familiar interaction. So this is the perfect... Uh, in pretext of children to to tell their parents to go and attractiveness uh, to preserve attractiveness in San Jacinto Plaza for the children. So basically, they, they can see the train for 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 upside uh, site. And well, the this street, what Carlos was saying, is uh, the like an economical version of all the people that have, are having lunch around the buildings. So they just can uh, get down the buildings and go and grab a snack with their coworkers. Yeah, for and, example, in, in when, when they are on a break lunch, they can just go and, and we try to make this like a, a break point so they, people can go and lunch, as René said. And also this, uh, this making also like a movement also in all, the, in all, these, in all these buildings so they can like just go around with the family, have these uh, local commercials, have this uh, get a coffee, get a, a restaurant in the top part. So like resuming like the whole uh, main pedestrian avenue is like for the economical version of eating business. And the two buildings are uh, to go weekends to attract tourism and uh, to attract all the the leaf that back in the day El Paso downtown had. René Carlos, sorry, we are already at 10 minutes. Please go to the all conclusions. Right. So basically, uh, to conclude, the first floor is for um, local commerce and as, as we said, food trucks and all that. The second part is more, more like the restaurant part, the more, the more like... Exclusive. Exclusive part of the of the building and you can go, uh, where is that? Oh. And there's the, you can see how it is in, in 3D. And that's all, thank you. Okay, thank you, you did a very, a lot of works. And uh, I just have one question. Can you go back to the master plan? Just one of the uh, one of the master, but no, 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 no. This is a broad eye view. Uh, can we go for the, the, the drawings, the planning? Okay, oh. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one, yeah. Uh, I, I saw this is a very important. Uh, oh, sorry, I guess. Uh, the master plan, Rene. Yes. The the previous one, on the left. Oh, okay. Is this already okay? This one. This one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, 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 this is the main of the street uh, in La, La Paso. So oh, I saw you give a curve, this curve. And this curve uh, have some special meaning or what do you expect? Uh, well, it is actually just to make uh, the like the transit of the users uh, more dynamic, you know, like to, to bring more attention to the center. 
I don't know, because it's not the same as walking straight line and to go and, and be citing something, something nuclear. So that's, that's why we, we want to, to like make this, this, this tree a little, um, little bond to make more interesting for the pedestrian user. Okay. And right. actually, okay. sorry, and actually if you are a user and you're standing, for example, here uh, in one of the mm -hmm. food trucks uh, and, you, and you see at the end, you're going to see the nature instead of, of following the street. I don't know if, 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 if you understand what I mean. Like mm -hmm. like if, 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 if perspective. Yeah, like, like, like your sight is looking the nature instead of following this, this street when you are at the end of, of the pedestrian street. Do you feel also curious about what is inside there? Okay. Like these are the, uh, the, the essence of, of the restaurants and we want to make like these, these, these buildings not to just take uh, protagonists by architecture, but like uh, make a coexistence between nature, also between nature and the building. And actually, I don't know if you can see, that's why the building is like buried inside this, uh, this really tough uh, forest. Like, like instead of, of imposing something above the park, we, we want to, to have this second floor building and to make the essence that is buried by nature. I don't know if you, if you follow. And, and well, as, as you can see at the, at the right, we, 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 at night, we want to attract people also with a, with a play of lights to make, uh, to make the user always be curious by the, the essence of the park and uh, how they interact with them. Any other questions? I actually have a more like a comment that I really like to say. Um, although we're, we're gonna discuss this at the end, but particularly here. Um, I think you guys did a great job analyzing the context. So not only the immediate context, but also the cultural history, well, background history, like social history, uh, political things. So you, you did a great um, uh, contextual analysis. Um, and I really like that you came up with an idea or kind of a diagram showing, okay, this is what we see. And uh, we think that breaking this uh, monotony is our idea. But then when you try to translate that to architecture, you use this idea of like friendship or like duality, and then you literally translated that to architecture. And then there you um, kind of um, experience lots of problems. Um, a major one mentioned here about the, the main street and then the others, which I can see that this, this idea of the centrality and what to put in the center and all, all those things that it, then, then, then you have to like uh, solve. Um, so I, I think that, that, that point that you um, uh, took that literal, that idea of friendship and made it architecture, you could like kind of revisit and try to uh, keep it as an idea, but not as a form and like translate it to, a, to another shape, but the same idea. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? Is that like make any sense for you or? Yeah, I'm just yeah like, of course. Okay, yeah. I think that's, 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 that's something that you could do better. But other than that, a great like analysis. That's, that's very good. And the result, uh, I think it functionally works very well, but, but, but conceptually I have that uh, little problem with it. But very good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Manuel, can I hey. just comment something real quick? Sure. Just, just uh, I forget to tell you that we have a, 
uh, a video on YouTube uh, showing more details from, from our project. And I just forgot to mention earlier. So there it is. If you want to, if you guys want to check the video out, it's on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Okay, if Khan and Mayara, you are, uh, you are fine, we can go with the, with the next. Okay, perfect, thank you very much. Okay. Rene, could you stop to share the screen and we go with, yeah. uh, super. Yeah, of course. We go with the next group, that is Erika and Fer. When you are ready, you can start, 10 minutes. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, podemos empezar? Can we start now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now no, it's fine. Perfect. Hello, our project is the Duranguitos Recreational Center, which is located in the city center right in Duranguito, which is a place with a whole bunch of history because it is one of the oldest neighborhoods in that area. For reference, we have that is right above the Mexican-American border. Also, it is close to the Stanton Bridge, and uh, we have a theater just right above the site, which is called the Abraham Chavez Theater. And its physical environment, for give a context, we have uh, the city center, obviously, uh, some plazas, some suburbs, uh, and a whole bunch of buildings with commerce, offices, and banks. So for the social and economic analysis, we researched its history and we found out that, the, that this place sheltered an Apache reservation for many years and later the Mexican immigrants that came to stay in this place permanently. Uh, nowadays, it is known for preserving a lot of Mexican heritage shown in, shown in interactive heritage places and small businesses that promote traditional products. Uh, but one problem that is facing right now is that the government wants to demolish the whole barrio to build a sports center, but some uh, conservationists and the people that live there are protesting against it. Uh, in this barrio, there are mainly low-income houses occupied mainly by elder people. In its commerce has bazaars for local and independent vendors, typical Mexican ministers, markets, small food businesses, mainly of Mexican food, and parking lot establishments. And finally, for the uh, cultural purposes, this site has several galleries, a lot of street art in the murals of several buildings in the barrio, museums, and Casa Vides, that is a shelter for people without a home, especially for immigrants. So for the access for this site, we have this shape that represents the places and buildings that people can go to from the side of Duranguito to all its surroundings in a 10 minute walk. So first we have the pedestrian flows, which shows uh, well, how it distributes the uh, mainly pedestrian streets that we have, which are the users we want to attract the most. And also we added the vehicular flow because there's a lot of, obviously it's a city center, so we have a lot of avenues there, but uh, we have some of them surrounding the site that we're working on. And also because our goal is to attract a significant amount of flow to that site, either pedestrians or just people uh, going by car. Uh, we thought it was important also to work with the parking building business because they also can be benefited by the by that this new flow of people going to the site. Uh, so for the site choice, we wanted a strong reference point, uh, which is the Abraham Chavez Theater. Uh, for people to find the place very easily and also a key location where the businesses around it could benefit from the project itself. So for the project, we used two blocks that had completely abandoned buildings. Uh, we remained uh, one of them, which is the red brick one that we can see there. We remained the whole structure because it is right now in very good conditions. And the other one that is next to it, we only maintain the front facade and change the whole structure of the building for the project. So we wanted people to know the experience of hanging out in Duranguito. So the goal was to gather enough people in a place to have a significant flow all day long. 
So it was very important to us to establish a destination where people could enjoy going and consequently discover what Durandito has, has to offer. Uh, I can send this, but well. Uh, the main goal was creating a landmark, establishing a direct relation to the context with a lot of public space um, that has designated paths for a physical connection to it and also a visual one uh, with this roof garden over here for people to see what is happening in the, in the surroundings. So for it to be a complete recreational center, several uses were designed, but first we started by creating a grafting that is connected to the buildings that were already in design. And I'm gonna to explain to you all the parts that we have in the project. First of all, like I mentioned before, the red brick build, we, stay, we maintain it completely like it is right now. So we made it a restaurant with its own terrace. Next to it, we have the, the white building, it is now a reading space and it's uh, directly connected to the graph team that we made. This one has two zones. The first one is a um, permanent exhibition room and the second one is a little bit larger. So it can be either a coffee shop or also an exhibition room. Outside this area, we have this esplanade and this stage, but mainly we have this step series that we can see here down. Uh, this is the main connection we have with a building to the roof garden and also we can use these ones to sing or just enjoy the concerts or expositions that we can have in the stage and explanate uh, area that we have down there. Also in the other part of the block we have the locals that we made for commerce and offices and these kiosks that were adjusting to e-commerce and this plaza that connects the two blocks. Also, we can see that we have two parking lots. The both of them were already there and they were functioning uh, excellent. So we must see it that way. The parking lot in the right area is for the users of the bus station and for the employees and clients and stuff. So we maintain this connection from the street of the bus station and our street of the project. Also for reference, we can see in down there that we have this nightclub that is also important to maintain like this um, flow of people and pedestrians. And also like I said, the Abraham Chavez Theater we have just right above uh, our street. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So, so in the project, there are several spaces designated for the benefit of its physical context. For example, the, the station users could wait inside or outside the building while having a cup of coffee. The small galleries can have bigger uh, exhibitions. Food businesses could have even more customers by using these kiosks, especially during the night when they can benefit from the nightclub uh, users. And finally, while the greater light and flow of people the project gives to the community, the greater, greater security the barrio will have. Well, over here, we have the permanent tents for sun protection on the roof garden. Over here, there are the waiting and relaxing stairs near, near to the bus station. We can also see the unevenness of this esplanade uh, from the sidewalk level. Another important element is the covering structure for the stage that not only protects it from the sun, but it, also, it is also useful for hanging up uh, lighting and sound uh, equipment, and it can rotate to its own benefit. Then here is the mixed use room that most of the time it will be a coffee shop and near it we have the interactive terrace for the um, restaurant customers. For the new building, uh, we used a steel structure to support not, not only the building itself but also the about dead and live lots that we have in the rooftop. Also to adapt to the hot and dry climate that we have in the city, we implemented a glue system on the ground, in the ground which basically means that all the air that we have uh, inside the room that is hot, we, it ejects to go to the outside and maintain this flow of actually fresh temperature inside of it. 
And also in the part of the stairs, we have these crystal panels that can protect the people going up and down or just sitting there. And also maintaining the natural light that we want to uh, penetrate that room specifically and through the, these gaps that we have there. Also down, we can see the visual connection made from the terrace of the Bram Chavez Theater and also the rooftop. So this creates not only a motion flow between pedestrians, but also an architectural and, and spatial relationship between both buildings. And in the other side, for the one meter down uh, protection that we made for pedestrians in the esplanade and stage area that we just talked about, we added a, re a retaining wall to prevent accidents that can cause them to be caused by car crashes. And in the last elevation, we can see the, how the people from the bus station see in our project. And this creates an invitation from its users to see it or even just enter the building and know what it has to offer. So, well, in conclusion, this project has the intention of helping the community of Duranguito by offering its facilities so they can continue sharing and preserving the Mexican heritage, which we think that is the um, roots of this bar barrio, and also create a place sufficiently crowded where people no not only enjoy what is in the project, but also uh, the richness around it. Thank you. That Thank you. I have a question. Uh, I think it's a great project, um, um, uh, but my question uh, but is: my question is um, um, so you guys, so you guys explain that uh, this that site this side, um, uh, somehow, somehow represents represent the, the history of, history of uh, Mexican, culture Mexican culture or, or American, American Mexican culture. Um, I I I don't I, I don't, don't quiet get that if this particular, if this particular side represent that, side or represent that you mean or El Paso mean or Durango uh, uh, mm. district in general. But my question is that why you think why that you think a that recreational a center help to, help to preserve that culture? That culture. Um, well, the project doesn't represent by its architecture the Mexican heritage, but its facilities, facilities are for people to express um, what, where, they, where they come from. So yeah, that's why we have a lot of galleries and chaos for, for, for immigrant people that have their Mexican food uh, restaurants there or galleries or um, customized products. Uh, and they can use this place, and that's how this project is very helpful to that community. Yeah, uh, yeah. So all the areas are meant to be used to that purpose to uh, express all they want to sell, or the food, or art, independent of what they want. Because so there are lots of. Mexican restaurants in El Paso, Mexican food, right? So, um, so I understand that adding adding Mexican restaurants kind of celebrate that that uh, that idea. But but uh, I think the way you explain your project or the way that you represent uh, your idea need to needed to be slightly changed to emphasize the reason that you chose recreational center. I can understand that uh, from the back of my um, head that why you did that, but I think the way that you present your project or, uh, or represent your project doesn't necessarily emphasize that idea. But in general, very good project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And I have similar question, but then maybe more or less a comment. Um, uh, you, you did a very multiple function of the space and this says uh, give a very beautiful design and with a lot of detailed thinking to, to solve the problem. Uh, but uh, uh, as we can look at a bigger map, uh, the master plan or a bigger view, 
some, in somehow this kind of small business and this kind of uh, uh, activities happened because of the the volume of the how many people can maintain and can support this kind of services. If uh, uh, if uh, we give everything, but uh, uh, the the uh, the consumption, uh, it means the people who, who need this kind of services that is limited, uh, it will become a, another question or another problem, how we decide which kind of function should be uh, make activity inside the space. Uh, because uh, sometimes uh, we give a first design, but uh, as a community or as a uh, street uh, services going on, you will see a lot of uh, things change. The change because of uh, uh, the people's needs <laughs> and uh, uh, also depends on the economy and business. Economy and business. So this is another thing, uh, maybe uh, have similar reason, but uh, influence in a different perspective. Uh, yeah, okay, I don't have question, but maybe later also we can discuss this for, for, for have a discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. So we can go with the other, uh, with the following group. Perfect. Okay. So, Nadia and Odette, are you ready? Yes. Perfect. Yes. I'm sharing my screen, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, we already talked about El Paso a bit, but specifically downtown and central El Paso are located um, at the southmost part of the city, right across the borderline. And it is home to um, most of the, its tallest buildings, their most historic neighborhoods, uh, their most beloved murals, and is home to approximately 45,000 people. And in the creation of this project, we took two approaches in designing it, the existing cultural district currently in further development and a study of the people who live there. As of this year, there is an ongoing development of a cultural conglomerate to go along the business district located in the downtown area. We highlighted five places belong to it, plus two more areas we saw fit. The Public Library, the Museum of History, the Museum of Art, the Convention Center, the Plaza Theater, the Downtown Art and Farmers Market, and the historic neighborhood of Durant. We, we reached the flow of people to see how many people actually use the facilities. And we were surprised to find that there is a quite a lot of food traffic. We realized that even though El Paso is known for its museums, people are interested in their services. We found out that the venues are mostly used during the afternoon and nighttime. The farmer's market only on Saturday morning and Thursday are the busiest days of the library and museums. The last ones both closed on Mondays. Um, and Durango is a dead area and it's uh, currently closed. We found this information useful because um, we saw that the area has like a constant uh, traffic of people. But regarding the people, 80% of El Paso's population is Hispanic and other minorities make up almost as much as the white population. Um, for many generations, speaking a foreign language and exhibiting a foreign culture in the United States is something that isn't too um, seen correctly, but it didn't happen that much in, in downtown and central El Paso at least regarding Mexicans because of its nature of the border crossing the town that was already there and not the other way around. But because of it, of the current political climate, more Latinos fear looking and sounding Latino in public. However, because of various behaviors, including the street art that we saw, the museum's exhibit, the library book records and other things, it is evident to us that against all odds, Latinos refuse to lose their cultural heritage, 
Some historic buildings in the area were even demolished, but this spurred a robust movement to protect the ones left. Still, many citizens struggle with their Mexican identity, with a urban fabric losing more and more threads through the, throughout the years. In short, we discovered that people want to keep the culture alive, but they need the means and the spaces to do it freely. So, we start from the idea of art as an expression of identity and as a way to write and keep history alive. In the words of Jamie Bennett, not every city will have a beautiful waterfront or strong public transportation system or major university, but every single city has people who sing and dance and tell stories. We decided then to turn the Durangito neighborhood into the city's very own art district. Their main purpose is art creation and trade. On the outside, it will conserve some of the original facades and serve as an outdoor gallery via the restoration of existing murals. And the invitation to extend to local artists to paint new ones. On the inside, it will host workshop spaces, exhibit areas, and a place for trade galleries to exist. It will be mark a market that promotes the contemporary and historical culture of the city bringing together its best designers and creators and giving them the medium to sell their products firsthand, kickstarting the economy of the area once more. Our districts are very, are extremely important, but they are especially important in a city like El Paso because they directly support the development of indi indigenous content and local idioms in, artistic, in an artistic form. We thought Duranguito was the best area to promote this idea because as the first neighborhood of El Paso ever, it is very well loved and respected by locals who know that it exists. But in recent years, it's been under threat of demolition. So it only stands today due to public opposition. This has caused a great amount of people to forget about it completely and we don't think that's fair. So we think reviving such a beautiful and impactful part of the city will motivate generations to come and being surrounded constantly by its rich history while working will serve as an artistic inspiration and cultural pride. Plus, it is only a short walking distance away from the areas that we already mentioned. As you can also see in this new map. <laughs> um, so we started by choosing which walls to keep which to demolish and what to build from scratch. The preservation of original buildings and facades was uh, of the utmost importance as a moral in Durango A city that forgets its past has no future. Um, so here we have the facades and we can simply see the before and the after, visualizing the buildings that, that, that state but the most imp impactful decision was getting completely rid of Chihuahua Street, running across uh, the lot, which will be replaced by pavilions running top to bottom, symbolically keep it. So here is the resulting ground floor. 12 buildings with seven major functions, gallery, exhibit space, workshop space, commercial space, micro-commercial space, event space, toilets, and storage. The district's main purpose is art production and trade, but it, it will also serve as a bridge, bridge to the past and the present. Like the people who, who have lived and grown in the streets of Duranguito, the buildings are the loving tale of years past, while living of a dreaming present and laying the foundations for years to come. Connection, fluidity, and identity are the pillars on which we base the architectural design. By connecting the buildings, both visually and spatially, we create a feeling of fluidity and continuity that helps uh, unify the community of artists and their crafts, as well with the visitors that are coming in. Mm. We, we have white windows looking to both galleries and workshops and walls adorned with local street art already existing and new one, as we mentioned before. And this um, makes every visitor feel welcome. The roof terraces that we can see here uh, not only bring nature up to every story in the project, but they also connect uh, 
the buildings at least visually, and some are even connected by physical bridges, as we can see here in the, in the plans. Uh, this allows us to play with room hierarchy and changing spaces, and we keep the trajectory of the whole aggregate, one of discovery and exploration, engaging the user's creativity in more ways than one. This is better visualized as well in the sections uh, with some details on how uh, the wooden decking works mainly for the terraces. Um, regarding more details, the landscape areas are carefully designed with the local and non-aggressive species so that the vegetation can trip with little to no care, containing a well-grown image year-round. The addition of these wooden decks give it a sophisticated but homely feeling, elevating the area further while keeping it inviting. Um, here we have some pictures of emeralds of the sidewalk um, that we are going to keep in, in the strip. Uh, and as we said before, these pavilions connect the main entrance to the complex with the parking lot and at the back, both visually and spatially. There are also some nuclei of seating areas. Uh, that are of original design that are distributed towards uh, the complex in a more uh, lateral way. And we, here we can see some of the murals that we are keeping that we thought uh, show Mexican culture, not only because they were made by Mexican people in the years that they grew up in, but also because they show the opposition. For example, this one says uh, Duranguito Resiste, which is Duranguito Resists. And this is the original um, um, place that says the Duranguito is the birthplace of El Paso. So we, we saw fit to keep some of those elements and here are the, the new art areas that we designed. So all in all, we know that the addition of an art district will mean a change for the better in El Paso um, by giving their voices back to those who have lost it and giving a platform to all of the brilliant minds that are born in this beautiful and complex city. So we hope to give that to it. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have, uh, uh, yes, first, uh, I think this is a very good uh, result. You have that and uh, I, I cannot imagine because everyone, uh, every of you stay home right now. We have the similar problem now, but uh, you can do a lot of work by, by, uh, by your, your, your your effort and my question is uh, because the title is related with the design uh, of arts and the serious uh, question you do uh, with many uh, small elements but all related with arts and yes. for the con concrete uh, connected uh, how can you maintain the artist because uh, as we know if you want to give a kind of artist atmosphere uh, the important is to invite the artists to join. And in, in somehow, uh, usually we have the concept of how to make artists uh, to, uh, to have property, to stay there, or they can rent an apartment, or they can uh, partly uh, work uh, in this area. So, so, so one thing is uh, you create a lot of artist work. The other thing is how you make this sustainable, how you can, uh, can can give uh, attractive for the artists that want to join. Uh, so from the master plan, uh, where the artist can stay, or, or, or it, uh, do, do you have this kind of a uh, comment? This is my question, thank you. Well, the original plan, we mentioned the ongoing plan of the cultural district because it exists, it is a thing that the government in El Paso is doing. So they are building, for example, also a children's museum. So we thought we could pitch in this idea to them. So it will be more of like a government thing instead of a private um, organized building or a complex, I guess. And uh, the area is surrounded by houses, like people live around the area. So we didn't really think much of uh, if people would live uh, nearby or not, but it is a possibility that they already live nearby because there are um, houses 
in the vicinity. I would I would like to add to that that uh, El Paso Museum of Art and uh, University of Texas at El Paso and also Texas Tech, they're um, basically the University of Texas El Paso and Texas Tech University helping the um, El Paso Museum of Art to bring artists uh, to the town for a short period of time or a limited amount of time and do exhibitions. So this can be um, an effort uh, with with uh, what with what uh, El Paso Museum of Art are doing um, at the moment. So um, um, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, um, housing, there are there are um, existing um, uh, residential neighborhoods around this area that can be used. But but of course you you should uh, pay attention to that uh, while while des designing. Um, I, I have a comment uh, that uh, I believe you, you guys did a great job of uh, analyzing the problem and try to introduce a solution for that problem. And, and I, think you, I think that you solved the problem, but I don't, I don't necessarily see it because you didn't show us any of your, you didn't even zoom in in your plans, I, I assume you you did lots of work designing those plans, but it's not visible for us to to yeah, see the plan and also the the final project. I think you didn't you didn't present your product um, in a good way at the end. The, the the presentation was really good, but at the end that you had the product, you didn't like you didn't try to sell it to us basically. That's my only comment. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nadia and Dodette. If you're ready, we can go with the next group. Okay, Priscilla and Jeanette. Yes. Perfect. Okay, can you see? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I am Priscilla and my partner Janet, and we are starting to present our project. And I just want to mention before my partner starts, unquote, that we were based in that. So it is only history receive time. So then you will know about what is going to be the point of our project. First, we made an analysis of the we visit El Paso downtown and its five districts, Las Plazas, Union Plaza, El Centro, Government, and Office District, where we found some lacks and needs that are affecting the people and the zone. Duranquito is being invited since it's proposed to make there an arena. That's why we seek to integrate and preserve the culture identity of this area. Considering that Duranguito area also has a Mexican people and we want to them to feel like home. Okay. Uh, we had a visit at El Paso uh, one month ago, I guess. So we visited five districts, the La Las Plazas, Union Plaza, El Centro, Government, and the Office District. So we have those districts here, but in this case, we were based in, in Viva, well, in the place that is Viva Duraguito, that is a, near, well, in the, in the Chihuahuita Avenue. So, uh, first of all, we want to mention our, our concept, that is uh, that we found some lacks and some needs that were affecting the people in the zone. So, uh, like my friend said before, that Duranguito was being, well, it's being invaded, so, for the 
proposal of the ARENA. So uh, considering that, uh, we want to offer a place of serenity and transition where the movement of the people is appreciated, linking people, environment, city, and the coexistence. So the concept now of the project of the pavilion that we are going to talk about is that we first we got the inspiration from the appearance of the border of the frontera, but you need a big twist where are enjoyable outside and inside is integrated to elevate experience and the inclusion of visitors and of any culture. So you can see like our imagination was like focusing in the appearance are creating connections and transitions so people can integrate and can live in and coexist together. So in our project, we want to um, show natural and sustainability, transparency to people uh, feel like more safe to be like a public shelter, recreational and also give a sense of light and shadow. So as you can see, this is how was before it was closed. So uh, my partner will talk about the, uh, well, the project now. So the proposal master plan, our idea was to design all the street of the Chihuahuita. And then we decided to expand to a pavilion where we are not removing anything. We use the street and the some parts of both sidewalks. And it doesn't affect that we are taking out to the streets, but for the cars anyways, there's left a lot of free area in the sidewalks. In the volumetric area is appreciated to, to Ranguito. Okay, so are the other uh, panel. In this panel, we will talk about the ground floor, how, how we, did we uh, add the things there. So, well, you have the path with, I can mark them. You have the path here. You have the combination of concrete and grass, also trees that you can add. Also, uh, some tables, benches, and kind of furniture uh, that you can have to so people and the users that that are going to be there, they can make their well. They can rest. They can work. They can uh, have and spend time together. But our point is that they can use that pavilion to make and to have some sharing activities like uh, painting, handcrafting. So here we put some of that kind of different furniture so they can um, work there. They can also get into here, this path. You can also go there. So this is, this is a platform made of laminate floor with appearance of wood. So you can go here, you can go here, or you can just go and work all the day, or you can go here to have a more open and open space. And so uh, also we have uh, some water mirrors, like that's the, um, like one of the things that can be like our point, like to be more natural. So we are using, we are using water, we are using a grave, we are using that, that kind of materials that can give you more serenity. So that, because they are more natural. So that's our uh, proposal of the, of the pavilion. And this is one of the renders. 
So this this is the view of that pavilion in the path with the benches and the and some trees, little trees, some some flowers. And the important thing is that you can see the gallery that that that's the another project that we are going to present. So you can see the gallery and you can see some of the benches of the of the in the inside of the pavilion. Okay. Inside the pavilion, you can make different activities, and the pavilion matures about 3.2 meters of high, and the width is 15 meters, and the every model matures 7 meters. Yes. So, this is our another uh, proposal. This is a gallery that it was here. So we wanted to make the gallery for the intention to be like a place. Well, this is, first of all, this is where is the Tiradero Market. So uh, we want that place to be to, for exposition for the works done in the in the pavilions workshops or in any place that people can create that and they can expose their their own jobs there so mainly this was designed to gain intellectual and economic development for the ones participating and to create cultural integration by gathering with different people and different people i mean like different cultures different kind of people so I can zoom in. So this is the building, the Tiradero Market. So we are just using this part, not this one. So here is that, that uh, the gallery ground floor. So you can enter here to the lobby first. You will, you, you are like here, so you can, go in in the entrance you can have the lobby you have the waiting area you have here the snack bar that connects with that terrace and you have also food vending machines in case you don't want to stay in, in snack bar you have the well you keep going you have the what well, the whole exposition room we didn't want it to like closed like one exposition room in another one in another one. No, we, we just wanted it to be like in one, everything open so people can have more visibility and can um, spend like, I think, at a more um, enjoyable moment, like not, not everything like closed with, wall, with walls and those kind of things. So, we are already at 10 minutes. Ah, yes, we are just in the end. So you have the office that keep to keep your bags and coats, your gift shops, and well, the, the waiting area that you have here, the, a column, and you have some uh, part of, of green, of plants, grave, and some furniture of seatings, and the restrooms and this is the renders this is a snack bar and this is how it looks this part so that's all Okay, thank you very much. And uh, it's very clear for the uh, your explanation of the drawings and the, and your proposal is very beautiful. And uh, I just have one um, maybe comment, but maybe you can give the feedback that uh, uh, you have a, a system of the public space, like a pedestrian area. And also from your master plan, I, I can see 
you give a kind of uh, uh, shallow uh, uh, space with a kind of pocket of the roof. And this part is, uh, you want to create a, a permanent, it means a stable, or could be uh, have some mobility, a movable uh, structure, because uh, uh, this uh, seems like a pavement, but uh, you want to create uh, some uh, new space from the outside. Yeah, that's my, my question. Can you hear? Uh, it's because it, um, it is kind of um, kind of um, tricky that, well, yes, uh, we put shadows, shadows in every building to represent it better. And uh, your question was like, how is going to be the mobility of the people? Yeah, this is, this part is stable. It means like a structure connected with the building or a kind of a, just a structure like an umbrella to give the shadow of the people on pedestrian road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the buildings uh, will create a shadow, but also the uh, pavilion because the pavilion is three meters so uh, you can get that shadow too i want to kind of like jump in and ask a, another question that may help you to answer the first question so did you design the open space as part of the idea and design process, or you kind of focused on the buildings and then the leftovers uh, were the, these um, open space, open spaces. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, we were based uh, mainly in that context. So uh, uh, the dimensions of the, of the ceilings, it's like, related to the to the endings and the starts of the of the buildings that are around it so we first we were like uh, designing the ceilings of the pavilion like if they are going to be related or not but we decided to make an emphasis on the context to relate the ceilings with the endings in the in the starts of the buildings, so that's that that was our first uh, movement, and then uh, we place uh, also the, these parts like are not like if they arms like in in some uh, free areas, so we can um, we can make a used of that areas um, because they were free they 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 were alone so we just we used that area so it's going to be more efficient and also uh, you can have more space in the pavilion so every free space and in the relation of the context of the context were our first uh, um, first points that we we made an emphasis and we were based in that so that was i i i think i solved the question i mean for me the kind of problem is that i don't necessarily see that relationship between your interior and exterior spaces that you you design so i i kind of see that this connection maybe that mobility of um spaces or elements that you're designing in, in, the, in the exterior in your master plan if if you could design it in a mobile way maybe that that would be very helpful for you to 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 make that interior exterior connection but very good mm -hmm. project thank you you're welcome
Thank you. Can Mayar, we can go on or any other questions? You're welcome. Okay, we go. Please, my app. Uh, you're mute. I just, I just need one minute, but while they're like uh, setting up everything, I will be done. Okay, perfect, perfect. So the last one, the last but not the least, Caroline Joel. Should I set up a, the panel for now, or we we, we can start, but no, we can. Start to share uh, sharing the That's screen, great. but we wait a little, little bit so Mayar and can are ready to to join us. Can everybody see it? Yes, we can. Sure. So Mayar is ready. Can are you ready? Can we start? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Please. Okay. Well. We are Joel and Carla, and we're going to present you our proposal. Well, our project is located on El Paso, Texas, and well, we focused on El Paso downtown because of its main features as a historical center of the city, where many of the buildings share the, um, the same color and material palette, making a blend of new and old architecture. Then by making an analysis of the public spaces by analyzed by urban fronts, we noticed that there were many parking lots, so these could be taken as potential and empty areas on the zone. And we also saw all the coexisting communities that take place in the general downtown. Then we zoomed in an area known as Duranguito, which is important because of its historical context. Duranguito is a really important area, as I said, because it's one of the oldest and it's also rich in historical context that is in danger nowadays because of the plans that are made for the whole downtown and the art districts, etc. And well, we also an analyzed the um, car traffic and most of the, of the car traffic is concentrated on the surrounding area that is the strong orange that it's marked there. And well, there we can see the difference from Duranguito because Duranguito has calm streets most of the day and also has many dead spaces because of its white street streams. And then by analyzing this car traffic and how the people mobilize it in, the, um, in Duranguito area, we saw a potential in the street called Canam Highway because it's a street that connects Duranguito with all the other areas in downtown, like Texas Tech, Union Plaza Terminal, and other residential areas that are on the surroundings. And it is a really wide street, so it's a great opportunity for change that could give a turn to how Duranguito is working right now. And it could connect these, the areas and I mentioned by with a walkway and therefore revitalize the existing areas and by this giving Duranguito a stronger character because of the walkway and because of the existing and surrounding buildings. And well, our proposal consists on the regeneration of urban areas by creating a walkway in Canam Highway, along with a union of other interventions in buildings that could also improve the surroundings and make it work like a whole thing. The walkway is based on a whole connection throughout the highway with different areas for resting, exercising, and other activities that could be made on places like parks, plazas, playgrounds, and running paths, along with the remodeling of the landmarks that are no longer in use or are in a deteriorated state. So Paseo Walkway, it is Paseo because it facilitates the way from one place to another. It makes it safer and better not to be traveling in car and encourages people to make different activities on their normal life day. Paseo has many benefits such as sustainability because by adding green areas to downtown, it helps creating a better environment. Then low maintenance because of the materials proposal, which don't need many attention to be in good conditions and as well the vegetation proposal because it consists on trees and plants that don't need much water and can be exposed to harsh sun hours. So it can eat up. they are the, um, like a, a very good vegetation for, the, um, for El Paso because of its extreme climate. 
then the connection with nature because of the green areas with different intentions along all the walkway and also natural surveillance because by attracting people to this area the area becomes safer with different people being in different places at different hours so it becomes like a um, surveillance made by the people that the whole proposal proposal is attracting and then it also impulses growth because it invites more businesses to the area and with this it generates more employment so it is like a um, whole growth of so socially and economically then with people feeling safer it helps the connection within the districts because it allows Duranguito to also be an active part in all the downtown right now it's like not a really not really active because most of the buildings are not in use so with Paseo it can be, become part of the whole downtown and an open community area in pool improves the social gr growth by connecting all the different communities that are existing there, such as students, workers, and residents. And well, Paseo is a long walkway, as you can see there in the master plan, and it has different attention plazas that are the places where people can, where more people can concentrate. The first one is the Hispanic Arts Plaza, and it is a connection between between Tiradero Market and the Hispanic Arts Museum, which are part of the building's intervention of the proposal that we'll tell you later. And this plaza makes them a whole dedicated to the Hispanic arts and traditions, which are really meaningful for, for this area and for the whole city. And now we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go over here with the playground. Uh, we designed a playground and for the design for the playground, we opted for a uh, more minimalistic, as you can see, a more minimalistic approach rather than the usual playground design. Its irregular topography resembles the dunes of the Texan desert in a more colorful and friendly way. And that encourages kids to freely use them and play with them as they wish. And over here, we can see the Union Depot Deposit Plaza, which is in front of the Union, which is in front of the Union Deposit or now Texas Tech Building, and the plaza and it uh, serves as a square for the Union Deposit. The plaza and its hill, as we can see over here, um, is dividing. Its, it represents uh, the idea of union between two different areas disregarding its differences and causing each other to become one. It is inspired by the sister cities of El Paso and to Aquares. And over here, you can see a more detailed how the plaza supposed to be in this cross section. It's two different areas, but they're connected. And here's a section you can see. And now we're going to talk about the building interventions that we actually convened in four, four buildings. We designed three buildings and changed the facade of one existing building. Uh, we're going to start now with, uh, with the first building, which is, there you go, which is the Hispanic Culture Gallery. Um, culture is a great part of our lives and it's greatly expressed in our traditions, food and in art. That's why we decided to have places that would let people experience it to the fullest. The Hispanic Art Museum next to the Tiradero Market will add to that experience by having artworks and crafts done by local and foreign Latin or Hispanic artists. Also in the gallery, we could have the opportunity to also feature some works of the most renowned Hispanic and Latin artists in the history, like Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, Jose Clemente Orozco, and many more. Also in the gallery, we could have the works like the of the Mata Ortiz pottery, that is a recreation of the Mongolian pottery found in the and in around the archaeological site of Casas Grandes, or more known as Pachimé. And now talking about our design over here, I'm gonna zoom in on the floor plans so you can see how the place is distributed the first the ground floor we can see here is we have a big lobby and then in the side we're gonna have a gift shop a coffee shop locker rooms offices for the administration bathrooms and also a big storage room for the 
uh, big storage um, warehouse for the all the artworks. And you get up from the staircase, and we also have an elevator. And the first floor, it's totally designated for the gallery. And I'm gonna show you the render. And over here, as you can see, our facade looks really strong. It's it's a brick facade because we want to conserve like the characteristics of the buildings that are in that area. So that's why we chose to have a brick facade. And what that uh, means is our facade represents how culture strongly influences our lives, but it's a uh, slightly uh, curvature means that it's able to adapt and become richer as well. And the side, and the side, is another side. So you can see uh, the first floor is totally open, and creating a uh, really free ambiance. And over here are the offices and the administration, bathrooms. And then just zoom out a little bit more. And now we're going to talk about the now existing Tiradero market. But for the Tiradero market, we decided to maintain its actual function as a market, but uh, also adding the food court where Hispanic and Latin typical foods like tacos, enchiladas, tamales, pan dulce, and even typical drinks like bochata, mezcal, tequila, sotol, camisol, and enjoy for the residents and tourists. This would be a great opportunity for the people to have, for the people to have the most authentic taste of this great cuisine that most people and uh, Americans don't really have um, known, actually. And let me zoom in real fast in the plants. We also proposed um, we also proposed uh, like a a food workshop where in the middle of the so like in, you can see over here uh, the market we have the market over here it's a big space open space for like a farmers market and over here we have where the people are gonna sell the food, make the food, the food court. And in the middle of the food court, we have like a, a, a workshop for cooking, for cooking, it's more or less like a cooking class, but the cooking class is made of glass panels as well for visibility. So not only be an experience for those taking the class, but also for the people in the market, they can view the people inside learning how to cook, um mexican food or any kind of latin or hispanic cuisine so i think that's a great opportunity and now let me show you the renderings while we are already so we minutes, huh? oh, let me go real fast Sorry, guys. so these are the renderings and now carla is going to talk to you about the mexican revolution museum well, nowadays this building is the Pancho Villas Stash House. It is an existing building and it was a successful historical point at some time, but then it became deteriorated and there are even plans to turn it into a restaurant or, or into another, another thing that could function better. So we decided to take advantage of this and make it a museum dedicated to Mexican Revolution where Pancho Villa had a really important role. And in this museum, people could learn and see the Mexican influence and its importance for the development of El Paso. It's a museum that works like a gallery where you can go and learn about history. It has a um, green area on the back of the buildings. So this could be like an exterior and interior museum. And we also left, um, well, we also thought about the idea of making it a more like techno technological museum, like with some, well, yes, adding some technological things to show the, the whole history. And then, well, that is the facade. The facade we added, uh, we left it as it is, but we just give it like a touch of painting that it's white painting and, the, and adding a mural on top for it to be like, um, an important thing on the building and showing about what it is. 
And then the last building we decided to intervene was El Paso Art Association. It's also an existing building. And we just we decided to just make a facade intervention because art is, is expressed in many ways, but the most important is like visually. So this association should transmit like the arts vibe instead of like showing the opposite. So the existing facade is great. It's simple and sober, but we decided to make a remodeling, removing the existing paint and leaving the brick exposed for it to harmonize with the existing buildings next to it. And well, this improves the context visually and also changes the perspective of how the art association works within all the paseo and the other buildings we chose to intervene. So to finish real fast, uh, our main goal for this project is not only, only to give El Paso an area where they can relax and enjoy the day, but to the re revive the historic context that Durandito has. By making the intervention, we are looking for more people and businesses to come to the area. And that way, all Durandito and Durandito as a whole will have its deserved attention and respect. Because uh, I repeat, culture is a great part of our lives and Duranguito is filled with it, and so we mustn't forget about it, but instead embrace it. So this is the way we're proposing to do so. And that's all by us. Thank you. Thank you. I think everything was really clear. So I don't have necessarily a question to ask. I just want to say that um, this idea of adding a walkway to preserve the basically the essence of the historic downtown is very clever. Um, the only comment that I want to make is that it wasn't very clear that why you cho you you chose that specific path and not like another mm -hmm. path. But other than that, everything was very clear, and the result, I think, is very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so, you. To, to answer your doubt, we chose uh, that path because we didn't want to intervene too much in now existing places. So that, that place over there was really big and didn't have too much things we could, uh, I mean, damage its character. So that's why we chose that spot and not other more centric path. But the problem is um, having a walkway at the edge mm -hmm. may not like add to the um, characteristics of, of, of the downtown. You're, you're kind of saying that, okay, we want to, uh, we don't want to intervene that much and like change a major thing in, in that area. But but when you uh, make a pathway for, for people to walk and enjoy and, and learn, you need to be in the, in the center. I mean, the, as I said, the result as, uh, as you showed is, is really good. So um, I don't particularly wanna say that it's not a good uh, path that you, you, you chose, but I'm just like curious to, to, to understand mm -hmm. the reason that, that you explained. Okay, thank you. I have the same uh, comment and uh, okay, I, I don't have a question. It's very good uh, design and, uh, and congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayara and, uh, and Khan to, 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 to join us and to, to give us these comments about, uh, about the project. Uh, I don't know if you have any other comments or something that you want to add on, uh, on the general project on, uh, or some comments on, on all the projects uh, now at the end, now that you saw uh, everything. Um, oh, okay, thank, uh, firstly, thank you, uh, Professor George. And uh, it's my a great pleasure to be part, to, to, to listen and to join this kind of review. Uh, uh, a congratulation to every group. Uh, you did a hard work and uh, in this special moment for this uh, uh, COVID-19 situation, everyone was involved. So 
uh, but this gives also us a new opportunity to 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 have this kind of a new platform, the virtual platform to discuss and to learn. So this gives a, a new knowledge of the transforming of the uh, technology to transforming the experience from the, our new uh, internet uh, of this uh, network. So. Uh, so this is a great moment for everybody we are involved and we can be uh, joined together uh, to share our knowledge, technology, and also our experience. Um, also in, in future, uh, I'm uh, very much happy that uh, if I can invite you and to join the uh, workshop in Shanghai and if everything is good uh, also I hope uh, you can visit China and visit Shanghai to know what is happening from my background and of my environment and the uh, urban regeneration and uh, transforming of the uh, downtown space and uh, villages uh, is really a big topic today uh, all the world is facing and we we try to solve uh, to give a new uh, new solution and this is different uh, we cannot find any copy uh, experience from books from uh, series and from any other uh, practical experience but we have to face our local problem and our uh, with a global concept, global thinking in uh, to solve the localization problem and, and this is a very reality and, and uh, I'm sure you did a very good job. Uh, for my uh, some com uh, comments that uh, because uh, we need to be very much clear that the research and design. So uh, to be part of the re design research. So uh, every of you, uh, I'm sure with uh, uh, professor, two professors uh, uh, help uh, you did uh, analysis of the city of uh, La Paz. Uh, this is a very uh, important space, uh, the location between the United States and Mexico City. So different concept, the different culture and how people maintain. Uh, this is a very interesting topics today. And also for, for you to strategy, want to active the space with artists, with the transformation of new space, with the, uh, new uh, pedestrian and, and working workable or environment and this is a, a very uh, multiple uh, solution and uh, we trans reality the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, reality uh, the final of the design could be meant every of your 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 proposal together and it's maybe not on one direction but it's a lot of things and this is one point. Another point is uh, people. Which people maintain, which people leave, and you want to be make them involved. This is very important. We cannot see the facility uh, is standing there with good quality, a good space, but we need to know who will be uh, the people to use the space, to share, and to, to make activity involved. This is very important, so that's why you have the experience could be give the proposal uh, but I in somehow I cannot because I can I cannot be at this moment I'm not involved but I I cannot really find that the target and the questions and to give the solution so, so this is a, always should be a, you keep in mind and to, to design for whom and to design for uh, for which group and for, for which kind of uh, uh, situation. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yes, um, I just want to say something to Professor Khan. Uh, it, uh, I hope that I'm also included in that invitation to, to China. Um, and it's not only for, for the class. Um, um, so I'm also very uh, pleased um, to be uh, in this final review and I'm very happy and pleased to see the great work that you've done. I, I think um, in general, um, architects, designers, planners, they sit um, on their chairs and they wait for other people to come 
and um, to ask for a solution for a problem. However, in this exercise, in this studio, you were looking, you were searching for, uh, for the problem. And that's very important that you can um, um, see and you can identify the problem first and then try to um, not necessarily solve it, but at least provide some um, design solutions. Um, I, so in that case, this was very successful. Um, I really need to congratulate not only the students, but, but also the faculty to design this course in general. Um, um, in terms of the projects, I, I, I very agree with the comment that just was said that you need to uh, think about the users um, as well. It's not only the architecture as an idea. Um, architecture is for people to use. So it's very important to, to add that in your um, contextual analysis. I think you, um, all the groups did a great job analyzing the history and the context in terms of um, a border city or US-Mexico relationship or in terms of like Mexican culture, but, but you need to be very careful that this is not any US border, uh, US Mexico border city, it's El Paso. So what, what I mean is that um, I, I totally understand that this is, a, this is an exercise and you have limited time, so you cannot like go deeper than this, but for future, um, for future practices, you need to think about that specific site, that sp specific people, specific users. It's not very general um, to say that, okay, we have a border city and we can do um, um, anything related to Mexican culture or Mexican-American culture. So it's specifically El Paso, Texas. So you need to, you need to try to incorporate um, aspects of um, local context in your project in a better way. Um, so that's my like general comment. But uh, again, I think um, you were all very successful in finding the problems in downtown El Paso and, and trying to produce uh, solutions. I'm sure that when you were here in El Paso, you found out that there are lots of construction in downtown area and a variety of actually construction. So you see uh, preservation efforts, you see um, renovations, you see a new construction, and then uh, you see like hotel buildings are being built, restaurants, office building. This shows that um, there is a demand um, to kind of uh, renovate and expand the downtown. And I believe uh, the way in which you captured it in, in your project is very good. So you, un, you, uh, uh, you, you understood that this is a necessity and you need to do some urban uh, changes in downtown El Paso to reflect that um, expansion. And I think um, all of you were successful in that aspect. Of course, there are um, problems in here and there, and that's why you're uh, in architecture school. And, um, but again, in general, congratulations to everyone. Uh, great work, lots of work. And I'm very happy to, uh, to see all those great work. Thank you, Mayar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Khan. Uh, let me tell you just one thing. I, I, I thank you very much for, first of all, for the comments, because I think that they have the value of uh, gold for the next uh, studio, for the students and for, and for us to, to focus better maybe on the, on the topic of the context of uh, the people, of users, and uh, hum on the topic of humanizing cities, as we were uh, discussing with uh, Pablo Hernandez some days ago. Uh, and then I really appreciate that uh, you saw these efforts, big efforts that the students made on defining the problem, because I think that one of the most important and challenging problem today for the architects is uh, understand what is happening in the world and understanding what is happening in the context because uh, uh, the problems are changing uh, day by day basically so 
that is a strong effort that we did and they really appreciate the fact that uh, you saw this, uh, this effort. Uh, then let me thank you also Pablo Hernandez, who is the head of architecture that is here with us, and uh, Pablo Renteria, who is the director of architecture, and they join us during the, the, the presentation. And uh, uh, they, I, I'm sure that they will be very happy for the invitation to, to cooperate in the future with uh, Tonji University and with UCAN and with El Paso, Texas Tech, uh, with Mayar. So thank you very much to everybody. And bring it to the students who make a very great job during this, this semester. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have so, a nice evening. <laughs> thank you all for your time. Thank you. So if you agree, Khan and uh, Mayar, if in the next days you can send me the, the Excel with the evaluation, then we, we can proceed and soon we will keep in touch again. Sure. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Have a great sure. night, everyone. And Khan, you have a great day. Thank you. Have a nice Thank weekend. You much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. ¿Y esa manita qué? ¿Cómo, cómo vieron? Muy bien, la verdad.